All right, so uh, my name is Michael Wild, and I work for Splunk, and it is an honor to be able to present to you today. I wanted to bring the use case that we have at Splunk, one of the many ones, but what I thought was kind of a unique use case of Docker, and show and talk about kind of how we got there. Um, my role is a principal sales engineer at Splunk, and I'm on what's called the demo curation and content team. So here's how my talk is gonna go. I'll kind of go over some challenges that we have, um, and then some building blocks on how we're solving them, right? Because this is an evolution of a system. Maybe next year it'll be a little bit different than it is, and we'll kind of see how that goes. Um, some challenges in modern sales engineering. Most of the talks at Docker are focused on developers or other things like that, but um, some people don't know what a sales engineer is. Like, how can you do sales and do any sort of engineering whatsoever? A lot of folks think that we're a little bit like this. Like a wolf in sheep's clothing where the wolf might be the salesperson and the sales engineer is the soft, fuzzy uh, goat or uh, sheep, if you will. But in reality, a sales engineer is more of an expert, often a product expert, sometimes a lifeguard, the person that you, you can reach out to almost any time, regardless if you're a customer or not. Sometimes we're a forklift operator because we got to do a lot of heavy lifting. We're often writers, support techs, salespersons. Yes, we are in sales. Chances are we're going to become friends. We might be a guide. You might call us a Jedi and a ninja. But what we really are are translators. We good? Oh, up there. We, they want this here. Oh, cool. I like that better. And we're really a translator of business value. So, you know, you may have, uh, and, and all the companies that are here, most of them have sales engineers. You may have a problem that their stuff can solve. And it's our job to communicate the business value of technology because you're an expert at your issues and we're probably an expert at our product. And so Splunk, in the field, field sales engineering group, we are the very first tier of technical brand representatives. It, Splunk sales engineering uh, is a highly technical and versatile team. It's a group of men and women larger than most startup companies. I have the unique uh, honor of being Splunk's very first sales engineer hired back in 2006 when there were less than 30 people. And, we're a couple thousand or so, I hear we, uh, we are in our annual report. And part of our job is to uh, demo product, to demonstrate how Splunk works maybe at your particular use case. And that might be offline, stuck in a data center or uh, you know, on a plane, or it probably is online. And sales engineers need the same experience regardless of wherever they are. And I think they shouldn't spend a lot of time installing and configuring and updating things just to get things going unless that's actually part of the demo. So for part of that, we've created an online demo system called Splunk Oxygen. And if you go over to our booth, almost all the demos run off this hosted environment. So in an online environment, that, that Splunk Oxygen is kind of like the air for our sales engineers. In a nutshell, we demo product for a living. And if you look at the graphic below, there's a lot of different things on the screen. Since Splunk's products address such a wide set of use cases and personas spanning IT ops, security, internet of things, business analytics, and a ton of different other use cases, there actually could be more than 50 demos that a sales engineer might have available. That's a, if you think about it, you know, when we see demos at Docker with the pets uh, or voting app or doing things with Swarm, those are pretty easy. Most people can learn them. But if you've got a wide variety of demos, that's a lot of stuff to manage and deal with, not only just here, but up here. And then to make it more challenging, because Splunk is a global software company, demos have to be available 24-7. Splunk Oxygen in our demo environment is just as important as our website, your online store, or your manufacturing line. Uh, 
for sales engineers also, there must be a method to contribute and update these demos. Um, often, uh, people will come up with interesting scenarios and they want to share them. And also, to make it even worse, syndication must be possible. Meaning, as I said, Splunk sales engineers are the very first tier of brand representatives, but we have a vast network of partners that plug our product into their solution, that are solution providers, that are value-added resellers, or a vast number of types of partners. We also have customers, and we have a community called the Splunk Trust, which is very similar to Docker Captains, these experts that also want to use our demos because they like our product and they have to show it off, just like we all show off Docker. So there's a lot of constituents and I think everyone should have first class tools. So then we go and put together a crazy little mantra, which is to, our job is to provide the ability for those who represent the Splunk brand, lots of folks, reliable and easy tools to help demonstrate Splunk's products without fail. Without fail, that's another one, regardless of environment. That's also another tough one, because you could be at the show, you could go to a customer, and Splunk Oxygen is online and you could log in. And then you have to go visit a customer in Des Moines, Iowa in February, and maybe it's a healthcare customer, and you're in a basement conference center where your Verizon card doesn't work, you don't get web access, and everything just goes wrong. And I still need to make sure that that person or partner can still do all of this very bold statement. So a year and a half, two years ago, uh, to fulfill this goal, we chose Docker Data Center. We became a customer of Docker to make this possible. Docker images really allow me to take a use case demo, package all the things up that are necessary, host it in trusted registry, and then make it available for anyone that has permission. Uh, just the predictability of being able to run the thing on your laptop as well as run it in the cloud makes it pretty much so that our guys and gals can do their job. But something you might not know, that I think demos are products. Well, wait, you demo products, but are demos products? They actually are. When you think about it, they often don't have a formal release cycle. You may not be aware, but product demos are usually not created by software engineers. At Docker, they are because most everyone there is a software engineer, but mostly product demos are created by field and marketing personnel, and often in a very tactical way. There might be a trade show coming up that hosts you know, some use case on security. Guys and gals will get a demo together, they'll put it together, they'll make it available somewhere, and then they're maybe done with it. And there's really often no not speaking for every organization, a well-defined end-to-end release process. So remember I had like 50 plus demos, there might be 80, and there's things all over the place and no real release process, how does this even work? With a lot of hands. But before typing these words really frequently, docker, 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 as a team we had to transition to this new world. Most people here become docker evangelists whether they like it or not inside their company. But um, to understand how things evolved and what our future needs actually are. But to do this, a CI, CD process had to mature, one that wasn't even really established. So on the left-hand side of the screen, there's a cycle. The product is released, Splunk, the core product, and the few other solutions we develop, enterprise security and IT service intelligence, they have a release cycle. Then scenarios must be developed and tested by field and marketing folks so that you can come to a booth and see how great it works. And then those demos must be deployed, right? If they're in Splunk Oxygen, that online environment, they gotta be deployed up there. And then we gotta teach the humans how to do the demos. And then this cycle continues because there's a brand new product release that Splunk Engineering is working on ahead of us doing our job. The way it works right now, or we're kind of migrating off of this, is there's about one to two EC2 instances per demo. 
Each of those is a, is a base config is deployed with some level of automation, so we'll install Splunk. And then the person that's responsible for the demo, maybe that sales engineer, that marketing person, that product manager, it's their job to put their hands on the keyboard and deploy their own content with SSH keys, doing it all by hand. Some might say doing it wrong, but at least doing it, right? So that particular instance might have a copy of Splunk plus a number of apps, maybe for service intelligence, for Amazon Web Services, and it comes with a domain name and all of that stuff. But what, what I wanted to do is bring DevOps to our demos, not just for the sake of saying that we're good at DevOps or we do DevOps, but discovering that there's actually a continuous deployment process that should be managed and can be. So what we've done is taken you know, kind of the three phases of this I call triage, contribute, and build. We've implemented, we're a big Atlassian shop at Splunk, so we have Jira to triage, to, to work on stories and fix issues. We've, we went from an environment where people were putting the directly installing things on a production server to maybe putting things in Dropbox or Box as the copy, maybe it was on their own laptop, to taking and building a, a Bitbucket or, or Git project that has over 120, 150 repositories right now. We've even in, implemented Gitflow branching strategy, and yes, I've become a Git evangelist and teach a lot of people who are not engineers how to use Git. All this really means is like when we looked at the, when Solomon was talking earlier, he, you know, you want to increase the speed of iter, innovation, but you want these tools to get out of people's way so they can focus on the content. So now a demo owner can focus on the content, make changes to what they're doing, commit that to a repository, and then of course we have Bamboo and Jenkins doing the building. And what are they building? They're building Docker images that get stored in trusted registry that we have deployed. I like the idea now that instead of hardwiring an EC2 instance size, I can actually have a demo owner tell me what his or her compute requirements are for a particular demo, because now this thing will run a container inside a UCP. Now, if you were to wander over to our booth and you were to look at the URL, it would say something like demo something.splunkoxygen.com. Every single demo has a URL that's readable that I can remember, which means there's a sysadmin that has to make a DNS entry for every single one. So what we've done also, I found a great project by a friend of mine at CloudBees who is a Docker captain called Victor Farsik, and he's created this awesome project called Docker Flow Proxy, and I'm gonna show you how we use that. But some of the things that we've sort of done um, that, that I've seen to be effective is if I have hundreds of repositories, most of our demos look the same, right? There's Splunk plus some other stuff in it. So I've make, we've started making some forkable skeletons, meaning that I have a skeleton repository when you, a demo owner, file me a JIRA, figure out your story, we need to provision resources. Um, we've created a base repository that's forked, and you pretty much don't have to do anything unless your Docker file is specific. You get, it'll automatically take a copy of Splunk, you take all of your apps and solutions and put them in one directory, and then it'll, we'll build it. So a simple pre-created set of Docker files is nice because it negates the de developer from making Docker files. Remember, developer is a term in quotes, right? Some people write software and some people develop content. Also, we've collected and collaborate all of these for business continuity. If somebody ever says, nah, I don't wanna put that in Git, tell them business continuity is extremely important. Never mind collaboration. So now we have a huge repository of every single particular demo. As you can see, we have, this is just a screenshot. Maybe we went from zero to 125 plus managed repositories in a fairly short amount of time. Did that mean we had to harvest and find things? Yeah, we actually did. I also think, here's, here's one um, piece of advice. Make a better Docker image. You can, if you're deploying software, you can just, write a shell script to wrap your Docker image and have it, wrap, wrap your binary and have it run it. But why not have it do other stuff while you're at it? So take and make a flexible entry point and command statement. 
that will let you do things like configure your app via environment variables, restart it, do a bunch of neat things, allowing for easy configuration. And we've done that at Splunk. You'll find our Docker images up here or on Docker Store. But if we look here, we can do basic configuration of Splunk with environment variables, where we're doing, we're setting things up on how traffic moves across, but I can also put little commands in. So I can run 30 to 40 different things as a part of preparing Splunk to be ran. I'm also trying to transform monoliths into microservices. Splunk isn't a microservice application. It's a you know, classic client server you know, web stack app, but there are some functions that I can wrap up into small packages, like where Splunk, the licenses go. And we have a configuration server called, a configuration component called deployment server. Well, I may want to make changes to that, but there's really no reason for me to make online changes and worry about like the management server being online. So I've taken product functionality and broke it, broke it up into small images. So now instead of having one node to handle management of it, I create Docker images for licensor and deployer, which means I don't ever online update those. I make changes of the Git repository, Bamboo goes and builds it, and then it goes and gets deployed as we de decide or update it. Treating things more like content. So to do this, I used a bunch of stuff. Use Docker Swarm and it, uh, Docker Swarm. I recommend if you have a laptop and use Docker, just swarm and hit the thing. If you don't have, uh, if you don't have any nodes, because then you can start using Docker services. Containers are nice, but services have state, as you've seen. So we're using services and then taking a pile of these and compiling them into a stack. And, there, and we're also using secrets to do things like store Splunk licenses, uh, store passwords and keys and some other stuff. Now, he, kinda here's a little bit of a animated demo of how this works. So first, we've domain name, we're DNS mapped all nodes.demo.splunkoxygen to one or more of these particular worker nodes. These purple nodes just represent one node or 100 nodes, it doesn't really matter. Because Docker has a routing, layer four routing mesh, when the domain name hits right here, it's gonna route to one of these particular nodes. So first thing, we launched two different networks, one called Proxy and one called Splunk Oxygen. I'll explain why in a second. The next thing, we launched Victor's Flow Proxy, and the Flow Proxy has two major components. One, an HA proxy to do reverse proxying, and two, a monitor or a listener, if you will, that looks at the service registry and notices when services have been updated or created or even deleted. And its job is to any time anything is updated with any services from ports to names to whatever, to update the configuration of HA proxy so on demand, very dynamic, I can have a service run and in seconds have a domain name available. That runs, so you know, we'll run these, we'll, we'll launch these services, maybe it's OI demo, AWS demo, enterprise security demo, and uh, they'll run. They're launched across both networks. Proxy is configured to listen on three different ports because, because we have some things that are there. And then also those microservice, monolithy microservices that I created also launch on this backend network because we don't need the license or the configuration exposed to the public network. It just, it's not needed. That's the brilliance of overlay networks. And there's a, one example, uh, some friends of mine in Germany at Splunk built a demo called threeclicksonebeer.com. If you were to go there, it's kind of interesting. It's like a microbrewery operations thing. And they, you know, they, I, I made them a repository, they put everything in it, we cranked out the build engine, and everything goes. But I needed to do a few things. One, we're using this as the YAML file. Stuff that's particularly cool, right? Remember when I said we make a better Docker image by allowing you to configure things in environment variables? We got Splunk commands that are running, changing the, the default password with a secret, setting the deployment server to deployer, changing the license server, and doing some other stuff to kind of like, get a few things out of the way. Setting up the networks, and then Docker Flow Proxy uh, reads these labels. So we have some labels to like tell it, hey, we've made some changes, what service domain it should match, uh, maybe what path, in my case on the path is slash, 
And in this particular service, we're mapping two particular ports. Port 8000 goes to 8000, which is there's a Splunk instance there that has a really cool demo that you can see how well the beer operations are doing. And then on port 80, it goes to a backend port 8080, which is a node application where you could go online, type your name, hit submit, and buy beer. And then a few other things that are associated with that. Now the power of this, we end up getting with one command in seconds, I have their domain name available, their front end web app available, and their you know, Splunk analytics with all their brewery analytics, which is pretty cool, okay? We have something that is completely usable and completely scalable. We found that this is, Docker has empowered and scaled our activities. So these 50 to 80 to 100 demos are available as image. They can be easily reset and cleaned up because we do allow high level privilege to all of our sales engineers to go in and create objects and maybe they, maybe you wanna show, they wanna show you how to make a dashboard. So they're gonna create all sorts of things inside of a demo and somehow it's gonna have to be cleaned up. By having this immutable image, we can easily reset it. These are runnable as Docker services by the ops team that's responsible for Splunk Oxygen. Also customer workshops, sandboxes, test drives, and other things like that become trivial to serve and scale. Finally, I have this uh, one YAML file to rule them all. So I can have one YAML file which is all of the demos that need to be online all the time with, in Splunk Oxygen, and instead of managing it piece by piece and updating it piece by piece, I have one single file. And let's say you're a Splunk partner and you'd like your own Splunk Oxygen. If you have access, I can give you one file, you download Docker, you set up a swarm, and you can instantiate the whole damn thing with your own domain names and Victor's proxy. Lastly, here's some helpful resources for you. Um, the author is right here, he's awesome, Victor. He lives in Spain, I live in Austin, and we talk all the time. Um, he wrote this great book called the DevOps 2.1 Toolkit for Docker Swarm. Flow Proxy is awesome. Uh, it does some things that the HTTP routing mesh in UCP doesn't do, and it's really flexible. Also, uh, you find me on Twitter in the Docker forums. Uh, my email address is ninja at splunk.com. Lastly, I was, um, uh, Splunker uh, sent me an email. He's a new guy. Works in marketing in our advocacy group, and he said, this is verbatim from his email. Registry is so cool. I was off last week visiting my family in New Orleans, my cousins in IT, and have been looking at Splunk. So I fired up a few demos off the registry, fired them up in Docker, did a dog and pony show, and stuff that relates to his use case. So this guy hadn't even been trained, and he was able to easily use what we had, which I kind of like. So thank you for uh, your attention, allowing me to bring this interesting use case to you, and let me know how things go for you. Thanks.